Hi everyone, this is Dr. R. Tulasiram, Associate Professor, Department of Social Sciences, Faculty of Agricultural Sciences, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. Today we are going to discuss about the topic marketing process and functions. So this is one of the important topics that is coming under the course agricultural marketing, trade and prices. So in this topic, we'll be dealing with two sections. The first section is marketing process and the second section is marketing functions. Let us move on to the topic. Right. First of all, a producer can be called as a farmer the ultimate aim for the farmer is to produce an agricultural commodity. So once after he harvests any agricultural commodity, the ultimate aim for this producer to sell this product to the market. And on the other side, if you take, there are consumers who are waiting to buy products from the market. So now these producers are in the left-hand side of a marketing channel and the consumers are in the extreme right hand side of the marketing channel that is marketing channel is the route through which any agricultural commodities is being transferred from the producer to the ultimate consumer but the problem is it cannot be easily done the producer has to sell this product and this product has to reach the plate of a consumer so in between this farm and consumer's plate there are lots of functions happens so that functions and process are called as marketing process and functions, right? So once the product has been harvested by the producer, that has to go through a series of functions and process. That is the manufacturer can be sometimes called as a farmer. You know, in agribusiness, in a cultivation of a crop, you can call this farmer as a producer. Whereas in industries, when someone starts producing a product, he can be called as a manufacturer. So the manufacturer has to buy inputs from a supplier. So the left-hand corner, you can see that is supplier who supplies inputs to a producer. So inputs like pesticides, raw materials, and other things that has to be transferred from the supplier to the producer or the manufacturer. By using these inputs and raw materials, they will produce a product and that product has to be distributed through series of activities and that will reach the wholesalers and retailers. The wholesalers will have a bulk quantity of commodities and these wholesalers will distribute these commodities to lots of lo lots and lots of small retailers. And from retailers, the consumers will go for shopping and they will buy whatever they want. So this is the process through which a product which is a finished goods or sometimes a product which need processing that will be transferred from the producer to the ultimate consumer. So after using such a product, the consumer will give feedback again to the manufacturer. So according to the feedback and uh, some of the tips given by the consumers, they will make adjustments when they again produce their commodity for the second time. Right, so as I said, in this segment, we'll be dealing with two topics that is marketing process and marketing functions. In marketing process, we'll be dealing with what is marketing process followed by different steps involved in a marketing process. Followed by, we will be dealing with marketing functions in which there are lots and lots of marketing functions. Say for example, you have physical functions that is loading, unloading, transportation, packaging, storing, etc. And you have facilitated functions that is, the middleman or intermediaries who are involved in a marketing channel, they will help the producers to sell the product to the consumers. And this middleman will also help the consumers to buy a product from a potential buyers. So they act as a engine in a marketing channel. That is why these middlemen are uh, in a comical way that they can be called as grease of a marketing channel. How the grease is very essential for a motor to run. So these intermediaries are called as a grease because they are very important for a marketing function. So uh, uh, among all these marketing functions in this particular lecture, we'll be dealing only with the exchange function. That is exchange of goods from one person to another. The person who buys the good can be called as 
the buyer and the person who sells any agricultural commodity is called as buyer okay so we will we'll be dealing with only the exchange functions in this lecture let us move on to the topic the first segment of today's lecture is marketing process that is if you can see on the left hand side there are n number of producers who can produce same type of commodity in our country say for example you take these pictures tomato it is being produced by some thousands and thousands of farmers all over the country from different states uh, different regions districts and small villages okay so that these harvested produces that is tomato that will be brought together to a center marketplace so the producer one producer two likewise you, if you have thousand producers the total product from all these thousand producers that will be brought to a center place that is called as market okay so what happens here in market these overall quantities after some processing these will be distributed to different consumers and these consumers are the users they are coming from different regions say for example the product that is available in the center place that will be distributed to each and every regions of our country so that is why by sitting in our home we can make a purchase uh, just by traveling one or two kilometers to the nearby shops so this is called as marketing process that is bringing together the commodities from different producers and keeping those commodities in a center place from there this can be distributed among different consumers for use so this market process consists of three steps namely concentration dispersion equalization first in a nutshell i will tell what it is first we will deal with concentration right so as i said the product from different producers of our country that will be brought together to a center place that is called as concentration that is bringing these products to a center place okay so where at the center place the quantity will be in bulk because we are getting products from different producers some of the producers can give 100 kg of a product some other producer can give 20 kg of a product so if you pull together all all in a one place you can call it as a center place where the quantities will be in bulk okay and at the center place from that center place equalization will be done i will just tell what is about equalization in the upcoming slides after equalization these products will be dis distributed or dispersed to different regions to different wholesalers and retailers from where the consumers can get it say for example if the center place is the mumbai market if the commodity is tomato this tomato in bulk will be distributed to different wholesalers and they will be taking this tomato from mumbai market to their respective markets so likewise each and every places will have the tomato market from where they can get tomato for uh, household consumptions so this is called as concentration dispersion and equalization now we'll deal with one by one first the first step in marketing process is concentration that is it is the first process of marketing the concentration aims at collection of products at a center place as i said the product from different farmers will be collected to a center place so collecting different variety of goods which are being produced at different places by different farmers here you can see so there are n number of farmers available so each and every farmer they will be contributing to the center place and it will be in bulk the product will be in bulk at the center place right so once the product has been brought to a center place what happens here because there are n number of farmers who is growing the same commodity say for example if you take guava so guava will be produced by n number of farmers okay so it is one of the important fruit crops that is horticulture crops but the variety that is being used by different farmers no it varies okay so the quality of the guava that which is brought to the center place it varies so based on the quality we, we have to give them prices so what happens in the center place we have to do your process called standardization and grade first what is standardization right so based on the quality say for example if you take guava you have certain qualitative characters for any commodity you have certain qualitative characters uh, for guava you can see color shape and uh, weight etc okay so if you take uh, spices you take aroma okay taste uh, etc so these are the qualitative characters based on the qualitative characters some of the standards will be fixed for the commodity okay so say for example the weight which ranges from 
200 to 300. Okay, that will be coming under first type. The more than 300, that will be coming under second type. More than 400, that will be coming under third type. So that is called as standardization. That is setting standard to the commodity based on the qualitative characters. I repeat, standardization is setting or giving standards to different commodities based on the qualitative characters. Some of the qualitative characters that I listed are aroma, shape, color, taste, etc. So that is called as standardization. So this process will be done at the center place. Okay, the next one is grading. Grading means based on the fixed standard, we have to give grades to the products in the bulk lot. Okay, we have a bulk lot of uh, tomato. So based on the qualitative characters, now we will give different grades for these tomatoes. Say for example, the tomato which is of good quality will be given with grade A. The so tomato which is followed by the first quality that will be given with grade B and so on. Okay, so based on the standard that we fix, we'll be giving different grades for such products. Okay, standardization is the process of fixing certain norms for the product. And these norms are established by customs or tradition or by certain authority. Okay, so it is uh, based on the basic characteristic features of the product. Generally, the characteristic feature that they follow will be qualitative characters of the product. And grading means sorting of unlike lots of products into different lots according to the quality specifications laid down. That is already we have made some standards based on the quality specifications based on which we will be giving grades for different tomatoes. So each lot has substantially the same characteristics as far as quality is concerned. So that is why when we go to the market, the same product will be given with different price. Say for example, Bangalore tomato and country tomato. So the country tomato that will be kept outside the supermarkets and that will be very cheaper when compared to the Bangalore tomato, which is kept inside a supermarket. So that is based on the grading that is being given for the commodity. Right, so this is just an example for the quality requirements for fresh banana export. So this is the quality ex expected by the importing countries to import fresh banana from India. So here the qualitative characters that is being included for banana is variety, color, weight, packaging, storage temperature, and mode of transport. So based on these things, the grade will be given for banana. Okay, if it is Grand Cavendish, they'll be giving grade one. Okay, that is 2.5 kg. So anything which is below 2.5 kg will be given with grade two. Anything which is very, very below par level that may be given with grade three. So the grade one will be given with a good price when compared to uh, grade two and grade three, right? Right, so Agmar is one of the important institutions that is responsible for giving quality standards for Indian products, okay? This head office is located at Faridabad, Haryana, and they are responsible to check the quality of agricultural commodities, and they will give Agmar certification. Once the Agmar certification is given, the product is free to sell with a good price. So they give Agmar certification for the following products, butter, ghee, vegetable oils, honey, wheat, atta, etc. Right. So the next process is called dispersion. So now the product has been brought to a center place. Okay, after getting it to the center place, what we have done? We have done two processes. That is, we have given different standards based on the qualitative characters, followed by grading based on the standard that we have fixed. Okay, after doing such activity, we have to dis disperse this product to the final consumers. That is dispersion is the business activity in which the goods flow from the central location to the final consumer. So where did we stop after concentration? Concentration is bringing the product to a center place. So now the product is at the center place and the quantity is in bulk. So from the center place, if you disperse this product to different final consumers that is called as dispersion. Okay, how will you distribute this product to the final consumer through some market functionaries? That is, as I told you in a marketing channel, you, you not only have producer and consumer, both are in the extreme ends. In between them, you have lots of market functionaries. Some of the market functionaries for your information, wholesalers, primary wholesalers, secondary wholesalers, middlemen, commission agents, brokers, uh, retailers then the ultimate consumers. So here I have given the wholesalers and retailers play a great role in this activity because 
once the product is being transferred from the central place that will reach either the wholesaler or retailer so as a consumers from where we buy we don't go to the central market place all the time we will either visit the wholesaler or retailer to get our product so uh, in tamil they call it as maliga kadai okay wholesalers etc so distribution or or reaching the goods from the place of distribution to the place of final utilizer that is consumer timely according to the need of the consumer right right so here in this second step called distribution it contains different steps because distribution it is not done very easily before distributing these products to final consumer we have to do lots of things why we need to do all these things because how do we distribute these commodities the only way to distribute these commodity is to transport that from the central place to the wholesaler or retailer that is two market functionalities okay so when we try to transport these commodities we have to pack it in a good way so for packaging you need some packing materials so this particular packing materials is different for each and every type of product say for example some of the products that demands corrugated sheet okay some of the some of the uh, other products that demands cotton boxes okay a bubble roll okay thermocol sheets okay laminations uh, some uh, plastic boxes okay then uh, cellophane tapes etc so these are some of the packing materials that is needed to pack the product before transporting it so once the packing is done what we do we do loading and unload so when you try to load it to the truck okay uh, you have to be very careful because uh, some of the products may be perishable and some of the products may be fragile that is it can be breakable say for example glassware in agriculture you can call tomato as a fragile commodity because because it is breakable and uh, perishable means milk is one of the examples and for breakable you have another example called egg that is also coming under agriculture so once it is being loaded into the truck then the transportation will be done and the transport lorry will ultimately reach the wholesalers or retailers sometimes from wholesalers the retailers will get the uh, lot okay from where the consumers will get their produce for household consumptions so this is the second step in marketing process that is dispersion the third step in the marketing process so it is a it is a technical process that demands some analysis also forecasting also right so that is equalization so what happens here so once you have transported the produce to the ultimate consumer you are not transporting all the produce that is being uh, taken to the central place okay you are you are concentrating all the products to a central place it is in bulk from where you are distributing this to the wholesalers and retailers but the point is you are not going to distribute all the quantities to the wholesalers and retailers why because you will be supplying only the quantity which is demanded by the markets okay the quantity which is demanded by the consumers that alone will be supplied to the market say for example if the quantity demanded by the consumers in all the regions of our country is a uh, 1000 kg of uh, paddy just for an example 1000 kg of paddy is demanded by all the regions of our country for a single week so now how much we need to supply we need to supply only 1000 kg out of the all the quantities which is kept in the central place okay we have to distribute only 1000 kg so after distributing 1000 kg what happens the remaining product will be kept in the central place so what we need to do now we need to equalize this okay so we have 3000 kg of paddy and 1000 kg is demanded by the wholesaler retailers and consumers so we will distribute that through transportation and remaining 2000 kg now we have in our hands so what do we do with that we have to store it in a go down or warehouses why do we store it i think you all aware of it because when we store it in the future if there is off season for the same paddy we can distribute this product which is kept inside storage to the market okay so why do we supply these products in the future because not all the agricultural commodities can be produced all the time of the year because agriculture production is highly seasonal okay you have even for paddy you have carry fun rabi seasons okay so you have a uh, planned cultivation you can go for sowing in a particular time so you cannot produce all the agricultural products at all the time of a year so what do we do 
during off season so whatever products that is being stored in the storage godowns that will be supplied to the nearby market from where the wholesalers and retailers can get their products and they can sell it to the ultimate consumers so that is why this equalization is considered as the bridge for supply and demand of a market so why supply and demand is very important for marketing because these are the two forces that decides the price of a commodity in any market so in a market if the demand is more the price will be high for the products in the same market if the supply is more that is the demand is less than the supply then the price will come down okay so this storage function that balances the supply and demand an equalization process which consists of storage that bridges the gap between supply and demand so whenever it is needed they will supply until then they will store these things in the godowns right so as i told you this equalization consists of storage function so what do we do we will store this product in the inventory and we will make entry about the date and quantity so whenever it is demanded in the market that time we will distribute this to the nearby markets during off seasons because during off seasons we cannot produce such commodities but we will require these commodities throughout the year but we cannot produce these commodities throughout the year we require it all the time so what do we do we need to store some part of the commodity so here in the, in the bottom side picture you can see uh, there is a deficit area where the demand is more than the supply so that time the price will be high okay when the demand is more than the supply at this point whatever that we have stored in the previous season inside the godown that will be released to the nearby market say for example at some point of time the demand is 1000 kg in a market but we have only the supply of 500 kg that time the remaining 500 kg will be brought from the storage godowns to equal the demand and supply so now the supply is 1000 kg and also the demand is 1000 kg it it serves as the bridge the storage function this equalization store so it equals both demand and supply that is being done only because of storage function so equalization refers to the adjustment of supply to demand on the basis of time price quality and quantity that is we are going to equalize demand and supply and what is used for this the storage function equalization aims at regular supply of goods which are produced in particular season but consumed throughout the year example paddy wheat jowar fruits vegetables etc similarly some types of goods have only seasonable demand but production takes place continuously for example raincoats umbrellas sweaters woolen socks mufflers etc so this equalization facilitates regular supply of goods to the consumers so that that is all about equalization right so in nutshell let us summarize the market process it consists of three things that is concentration dispersion and equalization concentration is bringing the product or assembling the product to a center place through transportation and the center place the quantity will be in bulk from the center place there will be dispersion so how dispersion is done it is being done through transportation and packaging so before transporting or packaging the agri commodities what we need to do we need to give standardization and grading for such commodities to differentiate quality pro quality products from the poor quality product so after dispersion what we do we equalize the demand and supply okay so we we bring demand and supply equal to each other so what is helpful to do so the storage function helps to equate this demand and supply in any market so this is all about marketing process so now we'll just move on to the second part of this particular lecture that is marketing functions as i told you this marketing functions that happens in between the producer and the ultimate consumer so you have in the marketing channel you have at one corner left hand side you have farmers that is producers on the other side you have consumers as i said in the starting itself so in between them you have lots of marketing functions without which the product cannot move from the producer to the consumer so any single activity performed in carrying a product from the point of production that is farmers to the ultimate consumer may be termed as marketing function it has four dimensions namely time space form and exchange the marketing functions involved in the movement of goods from the producer 
to its ultimate consumer vary from commodity to commodity, market to market, country to country, and the final form of consumption. Right. So market function is often asserted that marketing serve as a bridge between producer and consumer. As I said, without marketing functions that, that this producers cannot meet here consumers. So this property of marketing is achieved through marketing function. Thus market function is a link between producers and consumers. So it bridges the gap between producers and consumers. So what are involved? Who are all involved in between producer and consumer? So according to different economists, uh, the marketing functions are classified into different types. So based on Thomson classification, the marketing functions are of three types. That is primary function, secondary function, and tertiary function. The primary function consists of processing, dispersion, or distribution. So in the previous slide, we have seen the, there are four dimensions, time, space, form, and exchange. So this particular processing is coming under form that is when you do processing the form of the product will be changing say for example when you process a patty you will get rice okay that is same for all the products the, the, then secondary functions it includes packaging packing transportation grading standardization quality control storage warehousing price determination risk taking that is uh, and sometimes what you do you don't sell the products to the market you will keep it on the good own and you will be expecting a favorable high price in the future that is risk taking. Then buying and selling, demand creation, dissemination of market information. Dissemination of market information in the sense, the transfer of uh, information, like the price information should be transferred from the technical side to the farmers. The third type is tertiary function. It includes banking, insurance, communications, supply of energy and electricity. So next classification is given by coals and wool. That is uh, divided into three types, physical function, exchange function, facilitating functions. Normally, in agricultural marketing, all the scientists will be following this particular classification because it includes in, a, in, in, in such a way, it has given, been given in such a way. Okay. The first function is physical function where physical activities will be involved. Say, for example, storage, warehousing, grading, processing, and transportation. These things are very basic that we know already. And exchange functions, it includes buying and selling. And the facilitative function, as I told you, facilitative function is nothing but we don't do big work. The intermediary is middleman who involved inside a marketing channel who serves as a bridge between producer and consumer. What they do, they may do financing. When someone wants to buy, but they don't want have money, these people will give finance to the consumers, okay, to the wholesalers sometimes. Risk taking, dissemination of market information, where the product is available, where it is cheaper. So those kind of small things will be done by few middlemen and intermediaries. So they facilitate the marketing function. Without them also, marketing will happen, but they add some extra energy to the marketing function. If they are there, if these people are present in a market, the marketing can function a little bit efficiently. The buying and selling process can be done very quickly in a market. Okay, so we will take this particular classification that is exchange function, buying and selling. Okay, we'll be discussing about this particular marketing function alone in this lecture because each and every topic is a separate lecture storage, warehousing, grading, processing, etc. Okay, so in this particular lecture, we'll be dealing only with exchange function that includes buying and selling. So another uh, classification was given by Hughie and Mitchell. Okay, he has divided that into three types. One is physical movement functions, ownership movement functions, market management functions. Okay, right. So now in this particular class, we'll be dealing only with this uh, Paul and Wool's classification that is buying and selling functions. So buying and selling combinedly, it can be called as exchange functions. So buying and selling process can be combinedly called as exchange functions where buyer and seller will be involved okay so the buyer will be the consumer sometimes it may be retailer or wholesaler okay sellers it is not mandatory it should be a farmer he may be a wholesaler or sometimes it may be a retailer right so buying and selling is the most important activity in the marketing process at every stage buyers and sellers come together they face each other goods are transferred from the seller to the buyer and the possession utilities added to the commodities because uh, 
the utility is called as usage possession is who possess the commodity okay so when the uh, product is being possessed by the seller its usage is very low but the same product when it is transferred to a buyer the usage may increase so through the buying and selling that is exchange activity the possess possession utility is added to the commodities so when it is in the hands of a seller it has some usage that is u usage u and when the same commodity is being transferred to a consumer its usage may increase that is u plus 1 right so first we will see about buying function the buying activity involves the purchase of the right goods at the right time in the right quantities and at the right place it involves problems of what to buy when to buy from where to buy how to buy and how to settle the price in terms of purchase because normally we don't buy it very easily we select the products then we go for price negotiations okay we need to get satisfied with the price so at the end of every purchase we need to have some surplus money which is remaining in our pocket so the next activity is selling the selling activity involves personal or impersonal assistance to or persuasion of a prospective buyer to buy a commodity the objective of selling is to dispose the goods at a satisfactory price here the satisfaction which is related to the seller like how a consumer has to be satisfied after every purchase the seller also have to get satisfaction after every selling process so selling involves problems of when to sell where to sell through whom to sell and whether to sell in one lot or in parts so these things have to be considered in selling right so we have different methods of buying and selling which is very close to our life even we have watched these kind of activities in cinemas in our day to day life in our supermarkets in our provisional stores the roadside shops etc okay so we will see one by one now the first method of buying and selling is halta system okay so this system is famous in tamil nadu in all the regions of our uh, country not only tamil nadu in all the other states also uh, it is generally called as under cover of a cloth method okay so what people do they will be placing a cloth under uh, the buyer and seller's hands and they will be doing negotiation by pressing the fingers or twisting the fingers say for example if they twist two fingers it may be treated as 2000 okay the seller the buyer will again they will go for third finger that is he will be expecting 3000 to be paid then they will come uh, for negotiation at the end it may be either to 3000 or 2000 at the end so this is one of the systems followed by uh, the buyers and sellers in our country the next uh, method is price negotiations okay so the here price are fixed by mutual agreement this method is common in unregulated or village market so they face each other so there are there may be two persons one person may be a buyer another person is a seller right so the buyer you can see the small size of dollar the buyer wants to pay less and less for any product whereas on the other side the seller wants to receive high and high price for each and every unit of his agricultural commodity so at the end after negotiation has been done they will settle with a price which is satisfactory for both the producers and consumers the next method of buying and selling is quotation on samples taken by the commission agents here the commission agents take some samples to the potential buyer say for example if i am an agent i will be taking some samples from variety of commodities say for example if there are 10 different types of commodities i will be taking 10 samples and and i will be distributing these samples to a potential buyers so after seeing the samples the potential buyer will select any of the samples and they will go for bidding okay so based on the bid which is found to be higher so those persons will be given with the product the produce is given to the one who bid has been the highest among all the potential buyers the next method is dara sale method here the produce is uh, kept in different lots and everything will be mixed and it is being sold as a single lot so in the roadside shop you can see this if you see a vegetable you can see different colors of vegetables if you see a fruit you can see multiple colors of fruits in a single lot okay the main advantage of this method is you can sell it very quickly so that is the advantage in a short period of time you can sell all the commodities and one of the drawbacks of this method is as far as the sellers are concerned they will be having a lot which, which consists of both quality product and also 
the poor quality product. So the quality product has to be given with a good price, but since they are mixing these quality products with the poor quality products, the price will be common for both poor quality and good quality products. It is not a good thing for sellers. Right, so next we will deal with another method called Morgan sale method. The sale of produce is affected on the basis of verbal understanding between buyers and sellers without any pre-settlement of price. Okay, this method is common in villages for farmers are indebted to the local money lenders because some of the farmers they will be uh, indebted to the local money lenders that they will be in under pressure to repay their amount very quickly. So they will go for this method. Next method is open auction method. In many of the movies, we would have watched this method where the products will be kept as a heap in, in front of all the potential buyers and all the buyers uh, they will be going for bid, okay? So they'll be shouting like 10,000, 10,500 to 11,000, 11,500 and so on. So finally, everyone will just give up and one of the sellers will be there in the hunt with a high price. So those sell, those buyers will be given with the product. So IPL auction is one of the important examples for this method of buying and selling. Next method is a closed tender system where the same heap is kept, but the only difference is the price bid by the potential buyers will not be visible to all the other buyers. So what I bid as a, as a buyer, it is, non, it is not known to you, okay? The other buyer they cannot be able to understand how much money I'm asking for, okay? So the price quoted by myself will not be equal to that of others. So when they open the cover, which is kept, the quotations will be kept inside a cover, which is closed, when they open the cover, whoever has bid the highest, they will be given with the commodities. Right. So these are some of the different types of buying and selling. And combinedly, this buying and selling can be called as the exchange functions. Right. So to conclude, the agriculture where we cultivate and also we rear animals and we also sell not only the uh, output, we also sell the input also. Right? So to sell this output and input to a nearby market, we need to go for a process and that process consists of concentration, equalization and dispersion. And any single activity performed in carrying a product from point of production to the ultimate consumer is called as marketing function. So it involves packaging, transportation, grading and standardization, processing, valuation, buying and selling, price discovery and price determination, market information. So out of these marketing functions, we have discussed only about the exchange functions, which includes buying and selling. So what is the takeaway from this lecture for all your information? There are two people involved in marketing process or marketing function, right? So the ultimate consumer and the producer, okay? So what happens, the buyer, will be facing the producer, right? And the buyer will be expecting some consumer surplus, right? And the sellers will be expecting producer surplus. That is, they will be, they will be, they want to get high price, okay, for all his products. And on the other side, the consumer wants to pay less and less to get some surplus, extra amount after the purchasing is getting over. So this is the expectation. If after buying and selling process, if both the producers and consumers are in the happy mode, then this buying and selling process is a successful one. So that's all for today's lecture. Thanks for the patient listening. We'll again meet up in some other uh, lectures in the future course of time. Until then, it is bye from Professor. Thank you.